Do piercings hurt? We're going to go over why they hurt, uh, what you can do to change that, and what you should look for in some mental exercise, all kinds of stuff to help you with pain. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 71. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the fabulous Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in currently very sunny and kind of warm Des Moines, Iowa inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to a level of expertise as someone that has been in the industry for a number of years and kind of knows what he's talking about. Probably the most common question I get on a regular basis is, can I use numbing cream? I'm not a fan of it, nor am I a doctor who is willing to subscribe, prescribe it to you because I'm not a doctor and I can't do that. I do not know your medical history. I do not know what kind of side effects or uh, how I might put your body and uh, your life in risk. That, and I found that they're not very effective. They kind of numb out the surface, but that's about it. They don't really change how the piercing heals or, or feels during the process and usually do more negative impact on the whole process than anything else. So first off, as I kind of already mentioned, there's always a reaction or a possibility of reaction to the numbing cream. Maybe you've used it before, maybe you haven't but there is always that possibility. The other thing is if you look at the packaging, in most cases, it is designed for only intern or external use. Meaning when we put a piercing through there and slice the tissue and some of that cream goes inside, it could cause adverse effects because it's not designed to be inside your body. It is not something that's designed to be um, basically injected in there. The last thing is, is it usually causes inflammation, which is a huge problem when you're trying to get a piercing done that's going to fit into the area well and heal correctly. If suddenly it's twice its normal size or it's swollen on one side, the other side, the outcome is not going to be good because it's not, there's no way your piercer can in their imagination, figure out what that area looked like before you put that numbing cream on there and it started to become inflamed. And lastly, well, lastly again, and kind of outside of it, is from the job of a piercer, it usually makes it a lot more difficult because it's very, that cream tends to be very slimy and it's difficult to grip the tissue and get it set up correctly, especially if it's a piercing where you're gonna be using forceps. So, numbing cream, not a great idea. What would work would be an injection of lidocaine or novocaine, the injections to get the area numbed out enough where you would not feel the piercing would hurt 80 million times worse than the actual piercing would. It would be like overkill uh, to no end. The reality is, is that a piercing is usually a quick process. It's a one push injection, um, usually with a limited amount of pain involved depending on the skill of your piercer. You don't need to put a bunch of stuff on there to numb it out. So let's get into what causes pain. Uh, there's an, I'm gonna go into four major factors that I found when it comes to piercings. The first one is, is how sensitive the area is. And this changes greatly from person to person. Some people are more sensitive in their ears than other people. Some people are more sensitive in their navel than other people. Some people are more sensitive on their nose. We don't know this, and this is that kind of flip of the coin situation from person to person, and is one of the many reasons why we can't tell you 100% it's gonna hurt this much, and it's gonna feel like this, because everybody has a slightly different experience. The other thing that'll add to or increase pain is the toughness of the tissue and the amount of force that the, uh, the piercer has to use to push that needle through. Um, if it's, if they have to force it really hard, sometimes that can increase the amount of trauma and increase the amount of pain that varies from person to person. Um, I've found smooth and steady is always the best option, but in some cases, some tissue, you're going to have a little bit more pain just basically because it's tougher and harder to get through and takes a little bit more force. 
One more on piercers, uh, on the piercing side, lack of skill. The more unskilled the person is that's doing the piercing, the more they're likely to hesitate, the more they're not, the more they're likely to make mistakes, the more likely they are to just push it in a little bit and then stop and hesitate and do it slow and not clean and smooth or do a jab. Uh, a lot of this comes down to the skill of the piercer. If you have a more skilled and experienced piercer, it's probably going to hurt less than somebody that started a couple of days ago. Just to let you know. The last one is an important one. It is your state of mind during the piercing process. The more anxious you are, the more fear of the unknown, the more stressed you are about this piercing, the more it tends to amplify, amplify the pain experience, the more it makes the whole experience much worse. So, and I'm gonna get into this a little bit later when I, I talk about things you can do to reduce pain. One of the biggest things is try to get into a state of mind where you're not just on the edge of uh, walking out the door and screaming into the night. So let's get to the last part and then I'll let you get along with your day. How can I reduce the amount of pain I experience during a, heal, during a piercing? What are some of the things that you can do and some of the things you want to look for in your piercer that are going to kind of reduce the overall trauma and discomfort and pain and et cetera of getting a piercing? The first one is getting pierced by a well-skilled and well-experienced piercer. Nothing beats somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. You can't beat it. Um, of course, the guy that's been doing it for 25 or 30 years and has done a lot of piercings, millions upon millions, is going to be a lot more professional about what they're doing and they know what techniques cause pain and they're going to be able to reduce those and do them in a way and do that piercing in a way where they can cause the least amount of trauma and discomfort. The second one is get to know your piercer. Um, a lot of people will say like the first one hurt really bad, but then I went back to that person three or four times and now I have like 15 piercings and I barely even notice it. Part of that is becoming comfortable with the person that's doing the piercings with you and getting comfortable with the piercing experience. It does get easier the longer or the more of them that you do. That doesn't mean that every one of them is going to hurt less by comparison because there's other factors that play into that, of course, like location of the piercing. But kind of having that rapport and that understanding and that it, that professional relationship with your piercer does help to alleviate some of that fear and anxiety, which is gonna reduce the amount of pain that you feel. Number three, breathing exercises and mental exercises. Um, probably the most common or most used one is the deep breath. Take a deep breath through your nose and hold it. And when they tell you to exhale, you exhale through your mouth and the piercing is done at some point during that. Sometimes I'll have to do it once or twice. On certain piercings, I don't like breathing exercises because some people tend, to, I'll, I'll watch yet, but some people tend to move their head when they do that. So um, another option would be is any type of mental exercise, like counting from 50 backwards to yourself or saying the alphabet backwards to yourself will also help to kind of take your mind off of what is about to happen calm you and get you kind of set to just take in the piercing and not fight it. Conversations with either your piercer or your um, supportive group that you brought with you, your moral support. Granted, right now we're still going through the COVID-19. Most studios will not allow you to bring a, a observer, so to speak, with you or anyone additionally like, like we aren't. But if you do have that person with you and we're getting past all this and we're back to normal, bring a friend along, somebody that you could carry on a conversation with, somebody that's supportive, somebody that maybe has, has had piercings in the past and kind of understands what's going on. And also just carry on a conversation with your piercer. That conversation and that interaction can kind of calm some nerves and get you kind of more centered and away from the anxiety and fear of what is about to happen. Number five, eat well and get plenty of rest the night before. Nothing affects your state of mind more than just being well relaxed, well fed, and well rested. Also, it's not a bad idea if you have some stress relieving exercises that you do, some type of meditation, yoga, what have you. Maybe your thing is, you know, power walking. Do it before you come in so that you're in that kind of more relaxed and stressless state of mind. Number six, probably the most common thing that people ask when they think something's going to hurt is, do you mind if I have a few cocktails or smoke some of the, that stuff I like to do before I come in? 
Yes, I do mind. If you come in intoxicated, I am not going to do you do the piercing on you at all. The reason for this is that you are, it's going to amplify your emotional experience. Thus, it's going to hurt more when you're, when you're drunk or you're high. And it's going to make you difficult to deal with because you're intoxicated. And you're going to bleed more. Also, I would suggest not drinking the night before and coming in with a hangover because it can cause some of the same issues, including not being well rested and thinning of blood and all that fun stuff. Take care of yourself beforehand is what I'm getting at. Research your piercer in the piercing you're getting done. It can greatly reduce the amount of fear and anxiety you have about getting the piercing done. Reading other people's experiences on getting the piercing, either from that piercer or that particular piercing, maybe from a completely different piercer, can really help to kind of get you into the, uh, the, the thought process of knowing exactly what's going to happen. And I believe that the more educated you are, the less anxiety and fear there is over something you've never experienced before. Number eight, the reward is going to be a great deal more than the experience itself. It's going to greatly outweigh it. We are talking about a piercing that's going to take split second to do, maybe up to a minute to get the jewelry in tops, depending on the jewelry, but you're going to have that piercing for the rest of your life. It's going to be something that's going to be with you and it's going to be worth it. So getting over this idea that this is just going to hurt and be terrible and everything else, you really need to focus on what the end game is, what your reward's going to be. And number nine, the last one is you will survive this. I've been doing piercings for well over 26 years. I have never killed anybody. Everyone survived. I've only had two cases where I've had to send somebody to emergency room after a piercing. And in both cases, they lied to me about being on medication that thin blood. They survived too. So this is something you're going to get through and it's going to be fine. Hope that helps. Hope that gave you some hints and some ways to kind of overcome that fear of the unknown and all that pain and everything else and gives you a little bit more insight into the piercing process and what, you know, what it entails and helps you. That's what the biggest thing is and helps you maybe learn something that you haven't learned, didn't know before. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it. Uh, I like it when you like it. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscription and click on the notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something on here. If you like t-shirts, decals, etc., check out our merch store. There's a merch shelf in the, uh, below under the comments or in the comment area. Uh, also there's plenty of designs other than what's there, um, on our uh, site, which is linked in the description below. Now, if you, I missed something. Or maybe you have something to add. Maybe you, or maybe I brought up a question you don't know what the answer is to it. Or maybe there's some other thing you want to ask me about. Or more importantly, how you want to share how you deal with the fear of pain. Go ahead and leave a uh, comment. I love it when people comment. I generally answer them when I have time. Um, and it helps to not only grow the channel, but it helps to spread that, that knowledge with everyone. So comment if you got something to add or a question to ask. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your piercing needs in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Go out there, do something special. Just be safe about it. We're, I think we're getting close to the end of this thing, uh, the whole COVID thing. Let's, let's play it safe and get through all of it.